guys, this is Debbie. Today I'm going to be making some alcohol ink backgrounds and using those backgrounds to make some Valentine's Day cards. I've only played with alcohol inks a couple of times, so I'm not real good at that, and you're going to see that here. But believe me, we do save it in the end. Starting off with some Yupo paper from Tim Holtz and Ranger. This is a kind of a plastic paper that alcohol ink slides real good on. Um, I've watched a few videos and seen Jennifer McGuire and some other folks make some absolutely gorgeous um, background so I wanted to give that a try as you can tell I do have a few alcohol inks not a good um, solid collection yet but I wanted to get to know the medium a bit more before I actually invest in some more of those inks so I'm starting off by squirting some of the Tim Holtz alcohol blending solution down and then I'm adding some different colors of alcohol ink starting off with the pink sherbet. Um, sherbet. I'm planning on doing this as a Valentine's Day theme so that's why I started off with some of the pinks first. Uh, now I'm adding some um, flamingo. I really like that color. It's kind of a bright, bright pink color. And then I'm taking my memory keepers uh, marker airbrush to try to blow it around you know kind of like you would with a straw i think i need to lighten up on that a little bit i blew it around so much that you couldn't tell what was going on on there and i'm adding in some orange colors and again doing the same thing uh, if i was able to see it from overhead i probably would have done this completely different and seen where my errors were it's one of the nice things about doing a video you can go back and see what you did now everything does turn out all right in the end but most of this you're going to see it is really a hot mess and you can tell that i'm not sure how to fix it along the way um like i i think i mentioned before i've only done alcohol inks a couple of times and turned out so pretty and I don't remember exactly what it was because it's been several months ago so when it comes to techniques like these that are a little bit different than your norm you may want to do them a little more often than every few months because that way you can kind of build on what you've learned before and some of the techniques that you like that you used before so again on this one I'm blowing a little too hard with that <clears throat> with that airbrush there um, as you can tell I'm still having some uh, breathing issues so I wouldn't really be able to you know blow on it very much and it do much so that's one reason why I'm using this instead of trying to use a straw so at this point I'm not liking what anything's doing so I'm picking it up I'm trying to let everything just kind of run together and you can see I've got quite a bit of ink on there also don't like making a huge mess on my desk so that's one reason why I'm you know I'm trying not to let any of it flow over onto my desk so at this point I'm really frustrated with it and decided to erase most of what I did with a paper towel going back in with some more of the blending solution and then some of the um, inks again when I look back at the video there are some points where I'm now wondering why did I why did I not just stop because it actually looked okay it wasn't as good as I would have liked but it looked okay and now at least I've got rid of the orange which means I don't have the browns from the colors running together and I decided I was going to try just doing that let it kind of run down and blend on its own see how that one looked I do have a lot of white splotches on there and I didn't really like that part but as I go along it, it seems to do okay I've got a lot of runny pieces where it's heavier and I didn't want that so I'm trying to get some of those to blend out without having to add too much more alcohol ink or alcohol blending solution and then a little bit more pink up in that white corner and then again trying to look, kind of just let it blend on its own and then again I've decided okay let's see what we can do with salvaging this and then I'm gonna add some gold mixative into that and see if that helps it and I had not shaken this up so instead I've just got that binder that clear binder just sitting there so I'm shaking that one up some 
tried it again, I hadn't gotten it bl blended enough. Um, the gold is basically sitting in the bottom of the bottle. So it's not blended at all. So I'm trying to shake that up and get it moving. And it is taking a bit of time to get that all to shake up. Okay, now it looks like I can actually use some of the gold. So now I'm going to put some of that down. You probably notice it's a little bit lighter than it should, but that's because, again, it's not mixed up well enough. And I'm trying the <coughs> airbrush again to try to get that to move a little bit. Didn't burn, move it as, <coughs> didn't make it blow as hard as I had before. And then I decided I need to get some of this ink off of there. It was just pooling way too much on the edges. And then I'm going to put some more of the mixative in. And now you can see the gold better because it's had some time to, to mix together and settle in. And then just let it drip a little bit and blow it around a little bit more. So for the majority of the time with this panel, it really was just <clears throat> just a hot mess. But in the end, it turned out kind of pretty, so I'm going forward with that. Next, I'm taking an um, Impression Obsession Layered Hearts dies, and I'm cutting out a white cardstock. Oh, I basically went ahead and did four panels on my heavyweight cardstock. I thought that <clears throat> I would probably need that to get the kind of dimension that I wanted. Turned out that this cardstock is heavy enough that I was able to just do two layers per card. I was able to get two cards out of just the four die cuts. I'm going to run that through my Gemini Junior. Um, I just recently got this and I love it. It sits on my desk. It takes up a lot less space than my Big Shot. On my Big Shot, I'd have to go to a different table and stand to be able to use it. This one, it just sits there and I don't have to get up to do anything. So it is awesome. So you will see me use a lot more die cuts than I have in the past on there. I am already having to replace some of the um, <clears throat> some of the shims. That metal shim and the magnetic um, shim do need to be replaced already and I've had this less than a month. So that's something I haven't figured out yet. If you have any tips on, if you've got a Gemini Junior and you have any tips on how to make it so that you don't have, go through those those plates and shims quite so fast, please let me know. As you can tell, this went through basically like butter. Um, again, I love this machine. <laughs> I really do. I just hope I don't wear it out too fast. 
So this die cut is, I think, just super pretty. It's got a ton of those interlocking hearts on there, and it's going to make for a really nice um, cover plate for the top for that <coughs> for the alcohol ink panels that we just made. And I'm just adhering those together with some art glitter glue. As I mentioned, I'm only having to do two together. And these are, even though these are somewhat intricate, they really went together really easy. Didn't have trouble lining that up at all. So I really like this cover plate die. So after just putting the first two together, I realized that it was thick enough just to use the two together instead of needing to do um, four like I had initially planned. So I grabbed some of those um, <coughs> those cover those alcohol ink panels and that's the one that you saw me make earlier. With this white the white hearts in front of it, it turns out so really really pretty. I also during this inning made quite a few more so I'm gonna pull those out and pick one of those to use as well. And looking at these panels without the hearts in front of it, they all basically look like a hot mess. So I know that I need to do a bit more practice. But the positive thing is, even when you make things that you're not really happy with, you may be able to salvage them. So don't just chuck them in the garbage. Don't go um, immediately and try to paint over whatever on top of your project. Give it a try and see if there's something you can do with that. Um, as I mentioned, because of those white hearts on top and diffuse that color a bit, I think these turned out really, really nice. And what was really surprising is after I was done and I handed it to my husband to see what he thought, I ask his opinions all the time, but ladies, you know, most of the time our husbands, they really don't care, so they don't give any kind of comments. But these are ones that he actually really liked, which really surprised me. So. Even though I don't like the panels initially, with that cover plate on top and with them being finished cards, I really like how they turned out. I'm using the Simply Hugs die from Avery L to be my main focal um, sentiment on the front. So I cut out the smaller hugs out of white cardstock, and then I'm layering that onto a shadow that I'm cutting out of the Upo paper um, alcohol ink design and then just adhering those together putting those on the front of the card. Next I'm using a sentiment from the Cuddles and Hugs by Concord and Knight. That stamp set says big hearts deserve big and then we've got again that die cut hugs and that finishes off my card today. Thank you so much for dropping by. I hope you enjoyed this card and I would love to see what you create. Thank you much and have a wonderful crafty day. Bye for now.